Welcome back everybody to a new video and welcome back to Stereo and Beyond. A lot has changed in the last couple days since I shot my latest video and I wanted to, well, talk about it, share it with you and I promised there would be more videos. So I'm keeping my promise. Well, first of all, you see a lot has changed here. There are uh, tools everywhere and actually things have been cleaned up for the last hour. But yeah, as you can see, the TV is mounted higher. There I am, by the way, hello. The TV is mounted a bit higher. From where I sit, you can barely see the line of the, well, canvas painting, etc. But when you actually stand, the TV is still below that, that level. And why did I do it? Because my center fit perfectly. I had it on those foam pieces up there. But yeah, everything is well, everything was good. Until yesterday. I um, love to search on a second-hand uh, marketplace that we uh, well have in the Netherlands, which is called uh, Marktplatz. Um, kind of the Craigslist, eBay, that stuff for your international viewers. And I saw something. Um, it's in the lines with my Dream Santa channel. And I wanted to buy it. Beautiful color, good price. Everything was well, well worth it. So I went ahead and bought it. I'm picking it up next week. Um, well, this week actually, when you're watching it. Uh, the weekend of this week. And um, well... Let me show you what I got. I have bought, ladies and gentlemen, Bauer Wilkins. Yeah. Um, Bauer Wilkins is a good brand. They have made good speakers. But in terms of Santa channels, they are probably the only company that offers really big ones. That you can actually buy. That don't well cost uh, your your left lung or kidney, for example. Unless you buy them new. This is the ATM1 D3. Six thousand euros. There is a lower model below this, and there have been a lot of iterations of this center channel. And this is pretty much where it all started. Um, they don't have the diamond tweeter, but they do have um, that Kevlar mid-range and that beautiful finish that I love of Bauer Wilkins. I think the only ones that can match Bauer Wilkins in terms of, well, finishing with real wood and curves, etc., is Sonos Faber. But if you look at them, the, the diamond speakers that they make, the, the 800 series, beautiful. I have heard the um, 804 D3s. Wasn't that amazed by them. Uh, but then again, I am used to presence of big towers, really big towers. And those 804... Four D3s would fit in my MB Quad 2000s, let alone in my QLS 29s. So, and don't get me wrong here, I have made plenty of videos talking about that center channel right there. If you're searching for a new center channel, I would suggest try this first before you buy into the multiple thousands of euros worth of center channels. Because under a thousand, that's the best center channel right there. I do not believe the center channels that Bauer Wilkins makes that are in the lower lines are worth it. I've heard them, they're not worth it. You are better off with monitor audio or SVS. I'm not saying they're not good center channels. If you have one, really good for you. If you have one of the three way versions, even better. But 800 euros or dollars, whatever you live for, this kind of quality that an SVS delivers, the finish is better. They, they weigh more, the quality is better, 
But when you get to the high end stuff, that's where Bauer Wilkins really comes into play, in my opinion. And that thing right there is huge. New price around 2000 was around 2500 euros. And this would be the current iteration of it. About it. It has a bit larger driver. Of course, it has the diamonds reader, new technology, all that stuff. But my, my actual dream center channel, the, my, my dream center channel that, that I would buy in a heartbeat is... Uh, is it this? No, it's not that. It's this. No, it's also not that. Uh, I need to go to this here. Um, this one? No. Um, really well prepared here. This one. I think it's this one. No, that, that's not it. Well, it's, uh, it's this one actually. This one. This is my dream side channel. Diamond tweeter, but the finish is even more beautiful. Let me see if I can get a really good picture for you here. It's beautiful. It's, it's basically uh, this, but the finishing is a bit nicer. It has magnetic grills. Uh, it has better surrounds around the drivers. It has, of course, the diamond to it. This is just basic aluminum. But I am fine with that. The SVS also has it. But it has more tech inside of it. It should, it should have because it's four times the price of the SVS. Weighs a shit ton. But this one is also a lot more expensive. And secondhand, these things still go for, well, around 2000 I got this one for 900 And you see these around the 1200 to 1000 mark, if you can even find them. Most of them are black, and I don't think the black finish is worth it. There's also, uh, this is the normal rose finish, but there's also the red rose finish. I don't like that either. It's nice, but then you need to have the matching set. And this actually matches to my um, MB Quad uh, 2000s pretty closely. Uh, I don't know how the color comes across on camera. Uh, there's my turntable, by the way. We'll get to it. But um, yeah, this, that, that is the natural wood finish. Don't like that either. I, I also can't figure out for the life of me if, if it's sported, yes or no, because it says a flow port, but when you get to the back of it, it doesn't uh, show any. But I'm really curious about this, this technology here. But yeah, the fact that it, it's, it's not ported, or maybe it is ported, but also is interesting to me, because I have my center channel pretty close to the wall. But yeah, that's why I moved my TV up. And I'm a really tall guy, so when I sit in my chair, my eyes weren't actually at the center. Excuse me, at the center of the television when it was in the old position. But now it it actually is, so I get a lot more intimate viewing experience, if you know what I mean. But I still need to get adjusted to it. But um, yeah, this thing is already big in terms of a sense channel. This is big, but. In terms of an audiophile sent channel. No, my friends, that is small. This this one is let's let's see. Look, look, look here. Um, it is um, 32 centimeters high, 78 centimeters wide, and well it's it's 30 something centimeters deep. So it's not that deep. Um, it's 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 deeper than um, than the SVS. Uh, but let me get my uh, tape measure out here if I can do this with one hand. Probably not. Let's make you sick for a second. There we go. Lock it. All right. So, my cabinet is about 40 centimeters deep. And the SVS is about 27, 26 and a half centimeters deep. So, it's really deep. And in terms of height, 
the HVS is 17, I believe. No, it's a little bit higher. 2021. 20, you can see how high that other sand channel is. But you need to take into account that also the treater is on top of that. In terms of width, uh, it's about... Uh, Can I? No, no, I, I can't. Okay. How, how wide was it? 78. I need to get it even further out. There we are. This is not doable with one hand, ladies and gentlemen. It's about that wide. There is 78 right there. There is no place for a turntable anymore. My poor deck can only fit in just, just about. And my preamp has actually moved down here. Thank God it's a deep preamp, so I can just reach behind the cabinet and turn it on and off. But my God, it, it also just fits. Yes, yes, perfect. Um, I was actually thinking about moving my turntable to the place where my CD player is located. It's not doable. That is just not doable. I've seen people do it before, I just can't do it. If I would have had my old turntable, which is not that high, would have been possible. But now, no. So, I decided to make that my uh, final uh, corner. I can actually place my shit money properly now. This is my Phono preamp. If you're searching for a Phono preamp on the 400s or 500s, try this if you can get it with all the Corona and not things shipping in from the USA uh, thing, then get it. It's amazing. But yeah, here is it. I cannot open it anymore because it would hit the, the thing, but I am um, thinking of getting some rubber uh, feet, cutting them up, placing them, um, inside here so that I can just rest the dust cover on it and just take it off and I spin uh, vinyl um, This also allows me to well have a light maybe a little holder for my brush and all that stuff And of course, it's right near my vinyl But mounting a light there is actually something I'm, I'm interested in but it requires uh, power and signal because I need to get a signal from there Over to there, which is a little less than six meters so what have i done this is a little experiment that i'm going to do i have my um, rca cables two pair um, of three meters each right there well, they're not connected that's because i am going to use um jumpers and yes i know it's not audiophile and yes i know it's not purist and yes i know i know and I will get a proper set of RCA cables soon. I will. Just figuring out what cable I should buy for a 6 meter length. With, well, outspending uh, 500 euros. Because I'm not doing it. I've also thought about making a pair myself out of Mogami wire. And that's probably what I'm going to do. But I need to get it up and running. Because I need to buy parts make the cable, all that stuff. Uh, talking about making cables, this is normally the quality of cable that I make by myself. These are interconnects that I used on my vinyl um, setup. Um, really high quality wire, summer cable, um, shielding, everything. Uh, they are marked, this is inputs, this is output. Or is this the output? Yeah, this is the output. I marked it with the yellow spot to determine the output. So this goes into the preamp and that into the source. So, um, yeah, I will make cables, uh, determine the cost, but I just want to get it up and running. And my local shop has a couple of connectors that aren't expensive. Just a little RCA uh, connector, a little jumper, a couple cents probably. So it's fine. I, I do want to get a nice quality one. And it's also something that I can use when testing equipment. Now I'm talking about testing equipment. There's another topic that I want to talk about. I'm getting some new speakers and a really big subwoofer in for 
testing really soon because I do write for an iFire website and um, this is all my stuff by the way when when something is not mine I will uh, disclose that of course but um, yeah that's coming soon so I don't know when a couple of weeks probably I will get it in parts and it's something from Sweden no it's not book art but it's something better maybe maybe we'll see but yes um, I'm just gonna enjoy this now and probably I don't know I that, that sanity is gonna blow me away the size when I went from my little monitor audio bronze to this thing it was big but now the, the, the big the big chungus the big chunky boy will arrive I'm also wondering about the whole, uh, well, jumper situation, because they can be bi wired or bi amped if you want to do that. But um, there are no jumpers, so I don't, I don't know. But yes, this, this, this is the thing that adds a little bit of the height, of course, but the finishing. Look at that wood, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, and it, the, the curves, and I, I love how SVS makes their products look. It's a bit boring. The shape is really nice. They're like shaped in at the sides. Amazing. But I'm sorry. A curved speaker. It's just oof, amazing. But also my dream speakers. Well, I have my dream speakers. Those. I will never get rid of those. But dream speakers that I would dream of owning and trying in my house are the 803 D2s. Let me uh, look it up for you. 803 D2. Uh, these. Oh my God, These amazing speakers. I've seen them once in my life in the gloss black version, but I am sorry, but that is just, high five porn right there you can't you just you just can't and i would love to have the matching center for it but these things cost 5800 euros so no not spending that uh for now at least um yeah i, I would love to try a pair of these in my system with the matching center and i want to see if it's worth going to that level of sensor. I want to get a feeling of the quality, you know, and at this price with the color that I love, and I'm just going to run it with the cover on anyway. And yeah, I, I, I am still going to just power it uh, with my Denon X 6300H, but I will get a, um, uh, well, multi-channel amplifier, try to get one a couple of months back, but that didn't uh, work out, unfortunately. But it, it's building in progress. That's, that's, that's no shitty receiver. It has mono amplifiers inside, so the amplification is good. When I, uh, well, repaired my Onkyo M5060, I used the amplifiers in, in that thing again for my 2000s. I was blown away by the quality ever since I never tried them, just for stereo. I, I went from my uh, 4000 receiver, Denon, to a Quad 6 or 6, to an Onkyo 5030, to an Onkyo 5060. I never tried the amplifiers in this thing, just pure two-channel music. My friends, it's not bad at all. It's nowhere near the quality that thing pushes out. But I believe it's capable of driving that sender channel pretty well. But I am uh, cutting short here because I'm already talking uh, 19 minutes. So uh, yeah, this is what's happening. I will update you. Um, yeah, catch you later, I guess. If you have any tips about that sanded channel or um, experience, tell me, please. I will uh, catch you later. Goodbye.